Josh, you got the quiz. Okay. Okay, once you're done with um, your quiz, go ahead and read the article on Dr. Mengele. Don't just drink water and think th deep thoughts. Alicia, so annoying, thank you. Okay, so go ahead, you can read about the angel of death. Okay, how are we doing? You guys good? If you're done as well, you guys, um, and you're done with your, just reading that short article on Dr. Mengele, um, you can go into your um, Canvas module for today. What I would like you guys to do right now is let's go ahead and get into our, um, you know what, actually go ahead, find something that's, um, that, that surprised you about learning about Dr. Mengele, Joseph Mengele. 
you guys can go ahead and like copy and paste um, a detail into the chat to just share out. Kahele Alani, did you see in the chat? Right, okay, so let's look at this. In the chat, we have um, some share outs here. We have Caleb who said um, that he wanted to study about, about twins, like, ugh. no thank you. Penchant, Penchant is a, Penchant is is like a strong or habitual liking for something. Um, and so he was really interested in studying twins, which is kind of creepy. Okay, kind of creepy. And then Hayden said that he began experimenting on live Jewish prisoners. Um, Kahele Olani said that Manjele managed to escape prison imprisonment after war. This was very interesting. Why? Because he met up, right? At the very bottom, it says that he met up with Wolfgang Gerhardt. You see that? Okay, and then what? He took over Wolfgang's identity, which I thought was really interesting to, to elude capture, right? He took his identity, very interesting. So there is a movie actually, look at that, Boys from Brazil that you could watch, stars Gregory Peck. It's kind of an older movie, at least it's in color guys, at least it's in color, okay? Um, but I looked it up. And I started watching the beginning, um, just the first like two minutes. It's actually on YouTube, the whole movie, two hours long. So, you know, if you have nothing to do, just joking. Yeah, okay. So anyway, very interesting. Um, Kala Hikiola said, yep, he experimented on live Jewish people. Okay, all right, let's move on. So, um, I want you guys to just take the, the time right now. Um, let's go into our canvas and go to the very end of the module where it says notes from pages three to 84. So the first two sections of notes, you, sh you should have them. You should have five quotes from section one and five more from section two. Um, they should be in uh, two column notes. Okay, what I want you guys to do right now is to take the time to take pictures of your first two sections and upload them. Go ahead.
Kit, how's it going? You guys done uploading? I don't have anybody's yet. Oh, that's awesome. That's so awesome. Tell me why, 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 I, why? <laughs> you know what you can do is use your, you can use your computer and take a picture, Laris. Yep. Yep. You yes, can. Nobody. So what? Uh, no notes, guys. I mean, I figure the first time I gave you the open notes quiz last week, you would take notes this past week, this past weekend, and then have them ready to go so that you could use your notes for this next quiz. Hmm. Interesting. Well, it closes um, tomorrow at midnight, so up to you guys, okay? So I guess we should get started with our other section. I mean, geez, just be honest and be like, cool, I don't have notes, so... Um, Let's move on instead of make me wait. This class is very interesting. Everybody listening? Yeah, this class is very interesting. Why? Because you guys, you guys, where's Kalahikiola? Okay, this class is very interesting. Why? Because you guys pull Babu's moves. And you guys all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I give you the link. And I sent it to the wrong place. And you guys pretend like the link is up and you guys looking and, okay. So what I'm asking for is a little bit more character from you guys, okay? And I don't mean like, oh yeah, I give you plenty character. I give you makolohe isms or whatever you guys pull, you guys moves, you guys crazy, okay? I need you guys to be legit, to have some integrity, okay? to be responsible for your education. This class should have better grades, okay? No? You guys are like, oh my gosh, you're sounding like my parents. Please stop. Well, too bad, okay? We're on the same page. I need you guys to get better grades. Some of you guys who have Bs should be getting those As. And some of you guys who have those C's definitely should not be getting those C's and you should be getting at least a B, okay? It's not that hard. It's not, okay? So we gotta get going here. Um, let's go to the beginning of the module so we can prepare for this week's reading. So let's go ahead and get into our notebooks. We're gonna set up our notes. Okay, I want you guys to turn your notebooks um, to landscape way, okay? Flip it sideways. Okay, and then at the very top, go ahead and write night, pages 85 to 112. So this is the final section. Stop pretending like you're doing stuff and do it. Yeah, I'm talking to you. So what we have here is we have two guiding questions. I need you to write them down like a mind map side by side so that you guys can make sure that you guys are taking notes. My suggestion to you is to go in order like a counterclockwise or a clockwise, whatever order you wanna do, just make sure it's going around the same way so that your, um, your notes go in numerical order. Okay, so the first what we, what we titled it. I already said night reading 
pages 85 to 112. Okay, and then at the top, I guess you could write real big, hope, H-O-P-E, not hope, hope. So the first question is, what role does hope play in the last section of night? Hope, yep, the concept of hope. So in the very beginning, you had those introduction slides for night. Okay, this would be one of the themes. We're gonna talk about the second theme of this book, which is the father-son relationship in just a bit. But I wanna set this up so that you guys have um, your notes squared away so you guys can get some points for your notes. The second question that you should write down is this, what lesson of hope can you apply to your current situation? So, hope is actually a really important part. It's, it's kind of like the cousin to resilience, right? And it is the opposite of despair. So, I want you guys to be able to make that connection, right? We read this story of night, right? This memoir, so that we understand about empathy, right? Can you feel for Ellie and his father and the other prisoners that were in prison because they were of a certain race? I mean, ridiculous, okay? Can you feel for them or, or, or do you not feel anything for them, right? Can you make that connection? So what hope does, what role does hope have in this final section? We already started talking about that, all right? So let's get into our books. I wanna just cover a couple things because I'm pretty sure that some of you guys missed some things. Um, so let's get going. Um, let's talk about a couple things. <laughs> so we have these pipels. What is a pipel? Kahele Aulani, what is a pipel? Is that like a bar or? So a pipe is like an assistant to like um, the overseer of the camp, right? And so there was that really sad part in this last section about the pipe. What was it? He got hanged. Right, and what was the problem with that other than him getting hanged? Anybody remember? Had to get hanged too. The other two, the other two prisoners got hanged as well. But what was wrong with the the pipe being hanged? He was a young, nice boy, like a good boy. Right. He was just doing what he was told to do, and he seemed kind. Right. He seemed like an okay kid probably close to Ellie's age, by the way, right? But the problem with him being hanged is that he was too light. And so his body weight wasn't enough to kill him immediately. So he died a long death. Does that make sense to you guys? You guys remember that part in night? Okay, so why, why do they have pipels, right? That's a good question to ask, right? Why does the overseer have a pipel, right? So this is where systemic indoctrination happens, right? 
we have the younger kids being brainwashed into believing that this is okay to do. Okay. Pretty sad, right? There's also um, the other pipo that um, Ellie pointed out. What was the opposite? What was the the other pipos? What what did Ellie have to say about the other pipo? Do you guys remember? So there was that that nice innocent pipo, and then there was another pipo he talked about. Alicia, do you remember? Josh, the the one that was kind of like a I can't. Is it that one that moved like all the prisoners so he can sleep with that one girl? Um, one? I think that was a soldier, more like a. So the a couple. Um, the the pipo was another young kid who was especially mean to the elders. Okay. And um, for Ellie to mention that, right, says that he also has you know, respect for his elders where these kids were being indoctrinated, right? Brainwashed into believing that because these people were, were Jewish, that they weren't allowed to be treated like humans. Okay. Next thing, okay, I need everybody. Um, what was up with the French lady? Ellie pointed out early in the in this last section about a French lady. He spoke German and she spoke French. What was what was peculiar about that moment he brought up? Alicia, do you remember? Which one? The one afterwards where they meet at the cafe or that's the, the same one. Thing. Yeah, that's the same one. That's oh, yeah, one. it's the same part, right? I don't know. So what was what was interesting about that? Oh, uh, it's kind of interesting oh. that. <laughs> um, she was, wasn't she like faking it, I guess? She wasn't actually fully, whatever it's called. Jewish? Yeah. Or, Whatever, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what it says, but anyway, she was like faking it, so she had to pretend like she couldn't speak German so that she didn't get caught. So she right. just spoke French. Right, so she was trying to fly under the radar, right? And she pretended that she did not speak German. What else, what, what were you going to add, um, Hayden? That was exactly what I was going to say. Okay interesting point right that she pretended so very what's really interesting about this is after 1941 right after the bombing of pearl harbor right everybody you guys are aware right of the um internment camps right yes or no do you know what that is kalahi kiola you don't know Okay, so after the bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941, the United States imprisoned and took away the property and money of the Japanese citizens of the United States. Do you guys know that? Okay, yes, now, okay. And they put them in, into internment camps. When I was your age, I had no idea that happened. Not I didn't know that until I went to college and I read a book. And then I called my grandma and I asked my grandma if our family was ever put into an internment camp. And she said no, but that she remembered having to black out her windows. Does anybody have grandparents or great grandparents who was alive around that time? Yeah ask about that. Very interesting. A lot of people lost all of their, their money, everything because of the bombing of Pearl Harbor. So it's very interesting, the history 
of what America did while the Holocaust was going on. Was it as bad? No, but was it along the lines? Okay, so that would be something worth your time to research. Okay, all right, let's look. What else? Okay, let's go to page 84. Okay, where's your book? Go get your book. Okay, you guys have your book? Good. Josh, where's your book? Got your book? So this is what was really interesting to me is that I thought my students in my last class understood what was happening on page 84, okay? So there's a reason why I point you guys to all these videos to watch before, before you guys start reading, because if not, things don't make sense. Okay, so just take a moment to just kind of read the first paragraph at the top. Just read that first section. Okay, hello, Lani, you have your book. Okay, good. Okay, you guys good? You guys read that first part? Okay, so someone explain why they had to clean up before they left. Okay, let's, let's have um, Kalahi Kiola explain what, why do you think they had to clean up the camp in Buna, Buna before they left. Um, I don't know. I didn't really understand that because um, they were treated like they weren't humans, but it says, let them know that here lived men and not pigs. I, I don't know. I'm stuck on that. Yeah. Hayden, yeah. Oh, I think they wanted to seem like they were treating the Jews good and not, you know, inhumane. So they told them to make it seem like it was all okay. Very good. Thank you. The word inhumane is such a, I, I can't believe we even have that word in our vocabulary, right? To treat, to treat people inhumanely, right? to treat them like animals, even animals. I'm like, no, you can't treat animals bad, right? When I, oh, cannot, you know, I see dogs on chains, short chains, right? I mean, I cannot, I get, I get all bothered, you know? I don't know. What is the liberating army? Why did they have to clean up before the liberating army had to come. It's the armies that were fighting to free the Jews or like, yeah. Yeah. So the word liberating, right? To free, right? And so, um, I don't know if you've seen like, um, any type of World War II movies where they stumble upon a concentration camp and they free the prisoners and even the, um, the soldiers had nightmares when they saw, after they saw and freed those, the prisoners. So if you guys ever get to go to the National Holocaust Memorial Museum, there's this one part at the very end when they start liberating the camps. 
And it says on this little placard, this little thing about when um, the liberating armies, really, the liberating armies um, stumbled upon these camps. What would be the first thing you would want to do if you were a soldier? Caleb, what would be the first thing you would want to do if you stumbled upon one of these camps? Like, I'd be like mad, but like kind of just be like, in like kind of just break down. Like, you'd be confused. Yeah, probably raging, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then what? Then you would want to what? Like fight them like too bad, revenge. Oh, I was just more like thinking like feed them. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Up. Because oh. they were um, emaciated, right? I, I know you're thinking about like fighting the Nazis, right? But yeah, um, so what happened was once they stumbled upon the, the concentration camps and liberated the prisoners, they would feed them. And of course the prisoners, right? They're emaciated and they would try to eat as much as they could. And that killed thousands of the prisoners. Why do you think that would happen after not eating for long periods of time, being like basic, they were skin and bones, just skin and bones. There was no meat on them. You could see their skeletal frame. And then when they were liberated, they were fed large amounts of food and then they ended up dying. Why? Do you know why? So their body wasn't used to taking in food. And so their digestive system shut down and they eventually died because of that. So what they found out was that they had to feed the prisoners incrementally, small portions at a time to get them back to health. I thought that was one of the, the most um, like bizarre things I learned about when I went to the museum because you would think, right, just eat, but you just can't do that. It was very interesting. Okay. Um, as we go down to the, um, the bottom part of page 84, right? At six o'clock, the bell rang. Okay. I want you to read the rest of the page all the way to the bottom and find the detail that points to foreshadowing. Foreshadowing again is the what, right? Is the hint of what's to come. So read the rest of it. Find the detail of foreshadowing. Josh, where are you? Where are you? Where are you, Josh? Josh, I hope you're not lying down. Please don't lie down. You've had four days to lie down. Alicia, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, so we're on page 84 and we're looking for the detail that talks about foreshadowing, right? So maybe a hint that, of what's to come. That's what foreshadowing is. So look for a detail that says, okay, this is going to come. Hayden, did you find it? 
Find what? The detail for foreshadowing. Um, maybe the death knell. Could that be like because the sound of death? Keep reading the rest of the page. Maybe you'll find it. Caleb, did you find it? Um, when it said everything was going according to plan. Good try. Try again. Somebody find it. It's a um, hint. It says I had two pieces of bread. How I would like to eat them, but I knew I must not. Not yet. Uh, Never mind. It's a good one, but it's not the one. So foreshadowing just kind of hints at it, right? Yes, Alicia. Um, it seemed as though as, um, an even darker night was waiting for us on the other side. I read the book already, so. <laughs> you're, you're done. No, not done all the way, but. Yes, okay. Whole thing. So that makes sense, right? Um, I want you guys to do this and grab this quote. Go ahead and write it down in your notebooks because you, you'll need it. Okay, so go ahead and write it down. This is for page 84. It seemed as though an even darker night was waiting for us on the other side. So why is this an example of foreshadowing? What phrase in this quote says that, you know what, this is just the beginning of hell. There's more to come. Josh, what, what phrase of that sentence tells you that there's going to be more or a heightened level of evil? Uh, it just is a more mysterious kind of quote it doesn't no, what what part of the phrase to uh, what part of the quote so what phrase of this quote tells you that there's going to be even worse an even darker night was waiting on the other side okay the symbolism right of an even darker night was waiting right so what's interesting is look at the the quote look at the sentence before that quote. Kahele Alani, for you, the question is, what, what, what is the symbol of gates opening? Um, maybe that they're going to be free. Okay, very good. So what we have here is we have a dichotomy right, a yin to the yang, right? What we have here is we have um, the gates opening up, right? And usually that's more of a sign of freeing, right? Hope, right? Because they're prisoners. And then it's followed up with this line, right? With this sentence that says, the gates of the camp open, hooray, right? But not hooray, because that following sentence, it seemed as though, and even Darker Night was waiting for us. Hence the title, Night. Why? They did things at night so that they would not, um, so that people wouldn't know what was happening, right? So that people wouldn't know that they were treating the Jewish people inhumanely, right? You can't burn that many bodies and not create a huge black smoke going up into the air. So when would you do that? You would do it at night so nobody could tell. Nobody wondered what that giant plume of black smoke was for. Make sense? So you learned about the death marches in the very beginning. There was a, a video you had to watch in Ed Puzzle, right? This is going to start the death knell, the funeral, the procession was beginning its march, right? So 
Um, this next section coming up, you're going to be reading about people stepping on other people that are already dead, okay? If it's too intense for you, you're gonna to have to turn the page, okay? It's just, it's a, it's a really sad part of the book, okay? Um, and something's going to happen in this last part. So I need you guys to make sure that you continue reading, okay? Um, this is the part where they're going to run as fast as they can, right? What are they doing? Well, we're heading towards the end of the war, right? So again, keep in mind the timeline, right? This, this memoir started in 1941. As they get closer to 1945, which is the unconditional surrender of World War II, um, the Nazis had to pull back, right? Had to retreat back into Germany. And so they had to bring the prisoners with them. Yeah. They had to bring the prisoners with them. So they couldn't transport them. Um, so they made them march at night. Look at that last sentence at the very bottom on page 84. It snowed on and on. Some of them didn't have shoes. Shoot, this morning was cold. Imagine snow and walking, running in barefoot on rocks, okay? So um, you're gonna have to, you're gonna get to the very end of this book. Um, be prepared to write um, a short essay on hope, okay? So that's why you have to take those notes, got it? Okay, let's move on you guys. Um, at the end of class, I'm going to give you guys the Ed Puzzle video to watch. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, let's go to the CER. Okay, you guys there? So let's go ahead and open up the CER father and son theme. So um, this is your weekly assignment. Um, you guys are going to be responding in a CER format. It shouldn't take you more than one paragraph, but it better be a good paragraph. Okay, so let's go ahead and prepare that document. Let's go into Google Docs, choose the MLA format template. Okay, and let's um, prepare that assignment. Kalahi Kiola, can you do me a big favor? and share your screen so that we can make sure everybody's doing it just like how you would do to set up your MLA format. Okay, cool. All right, let's go ahead. Oh, you didn't choose the template for, you know how to set it up without the template? Can? Okay, go for it. If you wanna go back and then set up the template for the Google Doc, that's fine too. Remember where to find it? It's at the top, MLA report. MLA report. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, go to your, um, the, the waffle box at, at the top. Click on that. No, the other one. Sorry, that this one. Thing? Yes. I don't know, what do you guys call that? Okay, go to docs. Docs. And then find the template for MLA format report. MLA report. Where is it? Whoa, what the heck? 
<laughs> Where is the template? Should I go down? That is so weird. Where is it? Um, we don't need to go recent docs. Oh, go to right there at the very bottom. You see where the plus is? Lower the lower right corner, the plus, and then hit the template which is above it. Yikes! All right, back, go back, 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 back. Yeah. Okay, try again. There. There, top right, there it is. Report MLA, there you go, tick. Okay, and then just fill it in. How's everybody else doing, you guys good? Okay, copy and paste the prompt into the, um, onto the document so you have it. Okay, title it CER father son, son theme. Josh, how are you doing? You good? Okay. All right, and then go ahead and title it CER father slash son theme. Okay. Very good, November, 2020. And then go ahead and just delete all of the text below the title so that you have a nice clean sheet of paper. All right, so this is the prompt. So make sure you copy and paste the prompt in. So from pages three to 84, there are examples of the theme, father and son. Explain how the dynamics of the father and son relationship cause Ellie and his father to survive during their time in the concentration camp. Provide two details and support your response. So there's this word dynamic that I wanted to make sure everybody understood. Okay, so go ahead and read the definition that's in Canvas that I provided for you below. Okay, Hayden, could you um, paraphrase what dynamics, what you think dynamics means to you? Uh, like the relationship or feeling. Uh, between things or people or, you know, what you think is going on. Okay. I think the word might be interaction, yeah, and connection, because, like, that's, like, kind of like a moving part, right? Um, the relationships you have between people, sometimes they're really good, sometimes they're really bad, sometimes they're complex, right? But it's always kind of a moving amoeba amoeba like thing right it's like there's no real um 
I guess, structure because sometimes it's good, sometimes it's just like a regular, maybe teenager and parent relationship, right? It's not always good. It's not always bad. And sometimes it's like frustrating. Sometimes it's great and positive, right? So the dynamics between Ellie and the father, what would you guys say? How would you describe it? Let's start with um, Kahele Aulani. How would you describe the father-son relationship between Ellie and the dad? Um, and because we're talking about from the beginning of the book till our last reading, there's many answers to this. So share out. Go ahead, Kahele Aulani. Uh, they tend to like, um, like, have them like motivate each other. Like when the dad like is telling him to do his best for his um selection. That's a great observation. What about you, Josh? What did you see in their relationship, their dynamics? They have a pretty good relationship. They're giving to each other. Okay, like what? Uh, his father's inheritance was a spoon and a knife, which is actually good for them, right? I would think so, right? Some people had nothing, right? What happened, you know, to his shoes, right? Eventually, they were stolen, yeah. right? I mean... And then going back to Aulani, um, Kahele Aulani, she, you know, yeah, kind of like a lifeline. Yeah, they became like each other's lifeline. Okay, what else? Hayden, what were you, what, what did you want to say about their dynamics? Oh, uh, I think they both care and love for each other, or they both love each other, but it's like not in a corny, like obvious way. Like, like when he helped him with the marching, it's not like, they were hugging and, you know, kissing each other. He was like, oh, I see that you need help, so I'm going to help you. Right. Was there a little bit of animosity between um, the son towards the father? That's a big word, and I do not know what it means. Oh, look it up, animosity. Do you know what that is, animosity? Josh, you know what that is? Uh, strong hostility. Yeah, yeah. You guys ever hold stuff in, hold stuff against somebody, right? And then you're like, just wait, I'm gonna get you back. I'm gonna catch you later, right? Or like somebody did something to you, so you hold that in. That's what animosity is, right? What would be an instance? or a cause for Ellie to have an have animosity towards his father. Does anybody know? The dad not wanting to leave or move. Oh, yeah. Um, Kalahi Kiola, thank you for sharing your screen. Can you stop sharing your screen? I wanna be able to see everybody. Yeah, let's talk about that, right? What was the reason why the dad didn't want to apply for immigration papers? At the very beginning of the story, right? It said, do you guys remember why? He was too old to start a new life. Yeah. yeah. I'm old, right? Let's just stay here. Imagine if he had, right? I'm sure Ellie had that in him, right? There was another instance where they could have... Um, they could have gotten rescued early. When was that? Earlier. Alicia, what, when was that? Do you remember? Since you read ahead. Ellie and the dad, they could have been rescued earlier. When? You don't remember, Caleb, do you know? No. Ah, uh, anybody. Kahele Aulani. Is it when the 
dude came to their window like really early on no um okay so mm, oh no i can't tell you guys when they're gonna you're gonna find out in the next section i believe okay all right so you'll find out like right after, after we're in this next section. So there's another time where they could have been rescued. Okay, so that's gonna come up next. I don't wanna give it away. So anyway, um, what I want you guys to be able to also talk about is that, you know, it wasn't all rainbows and unicorns, right? Between father and son, but they, they still had to remain together, right? Was it a respectful relationship? Yeah. Did the father remain strong throughout? What is happening to Ellie as they leave Buna? What is his mental um, outlook um, developing? Is it developing or is it um, decreasing? degenerating does he still believe in god okay so reminder right these are extremely religious people okay um he's wondering where is god i think we would all wonder too if we had to go through that okay so anyway um, I expect you guys to be able to do really well at this CER because we've been practicing this like crazy. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. I need you guys to be able to now let's transition to this, right? Can you guys use the rubric to help you guys get an A? Okay, and I'm, I'm not sure, like, I don't know if you guys even pay attention to the rubric. Can you guys raise your hand? Do you guys actually read the rubric? Okay. You guys? So I'm showing you guys the rubric that is below the assignment. This is what I use to grade, right? So when we look at this, the claim answers uh, um, the prompt and includes the tag, which means you got to add those key terms from the prompt. If you don't add add the key terms from the prompt, then you don't answer the question and you get a zero. Okay, everybody clear on that. The claim is important because if you don't set up your claim and you're answering, you're not answering the question, you don't get the rest of the points. So next, the two details. There are many details to choose from. It depends on which part of their relationship you want to focus on. The two reasons I, I need to see that transition in to the reasoning, right? To emphasize this point, right? I need to hear those. Um, I need to hear the transition so that it smooths out your writing and connects your thoughts together. And then the conclusion, a final thought leaves the reader thinking, okay? Don't just end it in conclusion. You end it in conclusion and you'll be like, oh no, we haven't grown, okay? Show me that you've grown. I'm asking you guys right now, I'm challenging you guys to step up. I want to see another level of thinking. Can? Okay, explore it. The dynamics of the relationship is what allows them to survive. So what is it? Point something out. Okay. Look at that. Five points, five points, five points, five points. Make sure you use this rubric as a checklist. Can, Josh? Okay, I need you, I need you guys to pay attention here, okay? All right, um, that's pretty much it. Okay, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to have you guys complete your ed puzzle. So let me get to our class. Okay, so period seven, you guys can see this, yeah? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share the assignment in the chat. Okay, can you guys open that up, please?
Got it? I need a thumbs up. Okay. So this is what happens, right? I'm going to give you time right now to watch this video. I can see, you guys see this, right? I can see if you watched it, you guys looking at this, right? Okay, so um, it's only open for so long, okay? I need you guys to watch the, the video on resilience because it sets up the rest of the book, okay? That's gonna help you with responding to next week's question about hope. Ken? Okay, so I'm going to um, have you guys work independently. That doesn't mean you click off and you go eat lunch right away, okay? I need you guys to do this before you cut out. Um, and so I'm going to hand over the responsibility for you to you guys. Um, the other thing I want you guys to do is this, right? So there's membean this week. Don't forget to do your membean. Okay, write that down. If you need to write that down, write it down. Write it down. Okay, membean. Membean this week. Okay, if you, you guys have your planners, can you guys grab your planners? I need to show you guys something really crazy. So if we are on November 30th, Josh, you get your planner. Where's your planner? Where is it? Show me the money. If we are on November 30th and you flip to the next week, right? And then you flip to the next week. What is the last? That last week is finals week. So basically we have one more week of school after this, and then we have finals. Okay, in your, in your planner, I need you to write down review. Okay, we got a review, start reviewing already. Glass Castle. Write it down because I'm telling you guys what's gonna be on the exam. The Glass Castle. MLA format. And night. Can? I'm not gonna ask you like teeny tiny kind details about the glass castle, but I need you guys to go back into your notes and check it out. Okay, can ya? Okay. Um, I think that's about it. You have CER, you have the last section of night to read. Um, you have to take notes for the last section based on hope. And then you need to upload your notes for the last two sections by tomorrow. Did you write that down by tomorrow? Okay. Don't want you guys to um, fall behind. There's a couple of you guys that are on the edge of getting either a lower grade or you're at the edge of getting the higher grade. So I need you guys to push yourselves. Ken? Yeah, Josh, Ken? I need you guys to push yourselves, okay? This is my like cruise class, okay? So I gotta push you guys. I know I do. I have to motivate you guys somehow. And um, I want you guys to have a really good Christmas break, but it's not gonna feel like a break if you've been on break from, this, from the whole school school the, the whole first semester you guys get what i'm saying right work hard so your break feels like a break okay work hard so like you know when coach calls the timeout, you guys are like oh i needed a lot of break right caleb you know what i'm talking about yeah full court press gotta catch up and then coach calls a timeout. you're like oh thank goodness Okay, work hard. You guys can do it. Okay, as always, if you guys need help, you need to email me. Okay, because if you guys need help, 
I can extend due dates, but if you guys don't ask for help until it's past due, then that doesn't work for me. Okay, you guys understand that, yeah? Okay. All right. Get going with your Ed Puzzle. Everybody should be on Ed Puzzle right now. I'm giving you guys additional time, class time to finish the Ed Puzzle. It's about a 10 minute video. Make sure you answer all the questions. Got it? Okay. We're going to leave now because you're going to be responsible for this on your own. Got it? Okay. Bye. <laughs> you guys are so funny. <laughs>